the Colosseum was released about a week ago and people have started discovering sort of really clever ways to make your life easier inside the Colosseum and I thought I'd just put together a video to show a sort of small optimization to the, the spawn manipulation technique which has already uh, been discovered and widely published um, and with this method just using good pathing and good timing um, you can sort of simplify the waves massively and make it so that only two mobs are ever on you at once and you can actually go even further and make it so that these two mobs will always be off ticked uh, regardless of whether one of them is a manticore um, if both are a manticore as well um, and regardless of what order the orbs are on the manticore there's um, always a solve and I've sort of put together this video just to sort of showcase that method and explain a bit about how it works so the original spawn manipulation method had players starting on this tile here and the ideal thing to do after the wave starts is to run to B because mobs will try and align their southwest tile with you so they all, all sort of lure behind the pillar here and then mobs that spawn elsewhere can still have this sort of tile gap here to get caught on the pillar um, and that's fine that was sort of really good in the early days um, but there's a slight optimization we can make now so instead of starting from here if we start from this tile instead run to the same tile as before and potentially go a tile further than that and I'll get into that a bit later by running to this tile and by timing it right which is the key point all of these spawns will try to align their southwest tile and then get caught behind the pillar here additionally in waves six and above and I won't talk about the lower waves just because they're slightly simpler though still quite challenging on waves six and above uh, three by three mobs will spawn everywhere so a three by three mob will try to path towards you and then because they're three by three they'll also get caught on the pillar here so that's true of this spawn and this spawn which will both do the exact same thing and that means that by starting on this tile uh, or sort of anywhere in this area and running to B or A only these two mobs will ever come around the corner and reach you in wave 6 and above one slight optimization which I think I've seen a few people do is um, choosing the timing to leave from this tile so most people will sort of wait for things to spawn and then run behind the pillar but by choosing the tick you leave on um, you can actually make it so that you're leaving this tile on the same tick that mobs spawn and mobs are sort of inbuilt naturally with a delay in the Colosseum so they won't attack you for two ticks so if you leave the tick they spawn they won't attack for one tick they won't attack for two ticks and then when you get to B nothing can see you here so the mobs A and B still need to path for, depending on which tile you run to and which mob we're talking about, they still need to path for sort of three or four ticks before they reach you. On top of that, if one of them is a manticore, it won't start charging up its orbs until it sees you. So it has to path three or four ticks and then see you and then charge up the attack. So what this means is that by timing the tick you leave the start tile, you can run to B and then you have so much time to deal with the Fremenic and sort yourself out before you start worrying about flicking these two mobs. And I'm going to show a clip now um, which basically shows how to set up the visual metronome to make timing these wave starts really easy. Uh, the benefit of using visual metronome also is that you can set it to be a six tick uh, cycle and the Fremenix that spawn will always attack on a fixed six tick cycle which depends on when the wave starts so even if you run around or hide behind pillars they will always attack on the same three ticks in a six tick cycle and you can use this to your advantage so you can actually color the ticks with visual metronome so you can have one that's red one that's blue and one that's green and then that shows you the tick that you need to prey against each Fremenix and a lot of the time in harder waves there'll be monsters on you 
which uh, your sort of main focus will be them. But when you get a bit better and you can sort of remain calm in those situations, you can use these ticks to know exactly when to flick the Fremenic. Um, it's also worth noting that the Fremenic attack on six tick, but everything else attacks on a five tick cycle. And this might seem like an oversight and make it hard to flick against things, but you can make a Fremenic not attack by having it be pathing on the tick that it wants to attack. So essentially in the Colosseum, you can flick against all the five tick mobs. And if you can't flick against a Fremenic, you can make it move instead in order to avoid taking damage. Um, but the methods in this video won't really focus too much on, on the Fremenix themselves. Um, I'm going to show sort of two cases. and They're the only two sort of cases that you'll ever have to worry about here. Um, and I'll show you how to deal with any combination of spawns that can ever happen at A and B. So if we think about the different possible spawns that you could get, Assuming you time the start right, which should be quite easy with uh, metronome or visual metronome, you get to tile B and all the monsters lure behind here. What combination of two monsters could we have on A and B? The first possible combination we could have is two monsters that are the same style. So if we have two rangers, that's quite simple, we'd go and pray range. Similarly for two mages, we just pray mage, deal with the Fremenix and then sort of solve the wave after that. We could have two manticores, and manticores, as long as they see you on the same tick and start charging up their attack, uh, they will attack five ticks offset from each other. So after you've you started running to tile B when the wave starts, if you see that A and B both spawned a manticore, you're going to want to just stop your running early and um, move to this tile instead. By moving here, you don't break line of sight to either Manticore. So they can both see you and they can both attack you. And then you just flick them in whatever order their attacks come up as normal. So the only difficult situation is when you have a Manticore spawn on one of these two tiles and when you have a Ranger or a Major spawn on the other. Now, the nice thing about this method is that it doesn't matter what order the Manticore is attacking in. If it attacks with mage, then range, then melee, it doesn't matter whether the other mob is a ranger or a major. The reason for that is that the off ticking that we're going to set up will make it so that the mob that's not a manticore will attack you after you've done the three prayer flicks for the manticore, rather than having it be sort of in time with the manticore. And that's really nice, so it sort of simplifies things twofold because it you don't need to worry about which mob spawned. The one thing you need to worry about is which tile the Manticore has spawned on. So assuming that you've got the timing of the wave correct and you're moving to tile B on the tick that the monsters spawn, what you want to be doing is looking at tile A and B as you move and seeing if either of them spawn a Manticore. If a Manticore spawns on tile A, you want to click to tile A so you'll path one tile further than you would have. If a manticore spawns on tile B, then you just keep going to where you were going and the mobs will automatically off tick. Now, if you're comfortable with sort of dealing with the Fremenix and being able to sort of react to what mobs are on you and flick them when you need, then put very simply, all you need to do is Pray against the mob that's not a manticore after you reach tile A or B, and then just flick the manticore's attacks when they come. And anytime you're not flicking against the manticore's three attacks, you want to be praying against the other mob. And that's basically the method. You see which of these two tiles a manticore spawns, and then you run to whichever of these two tiles corresponds to that, and it'll automatically be off ticked with the other mob that spawned with it. Uh, the hard part of this method is sort of doing all the usual stuff, so dealing with the Fremenix, avoiding explosions. If it's a ranger, you need to avoid the sort of falling javelins as well. Um, but very simply, that's how the method works. Um, I've got a clip, I've got a couple of clips of the method showing a manticore spawning on A and on B with another mob. 
and they're not perfect. I take some damage from minions, but really that's okay. As long as you're sort of getting your flick set up, you can deal with the minions sort of in your own time and just make sure that you're protecting against the main attacks. So I'll play these clips now. Um, the first one has explosions two on as well. So it's a good example of avoiding the Fremenic explosions while dealing with them and while setting up the, the flicks for the, the other mobs. So in this first clip, it's wave eight, and this is showcasing a manticore spawning on tile A with a major on tile B. So you can see I leave the start tile on the tick everything spawns and nothing attacks me because that timing's right. I pray mage and start dealing with the Fremenix. And then as soon as the Manticore is charged up, I look to flick against its attacks. And with this method, I'd say try and just have confidence that it works and don't worry about trying to sort of match up the mob's attacks with the Manticore. Just pray mage every single tick against the manticore when you have to and it will automatically be off ticked in this video one thing i should have done slightly better is just waited a tick before attacking the fremenix um, you might have seen that i was pathed out west of tile a because the fremenix ran underneath me and in some cases that would um, mess up this method but it just so happened that the major was going to attack me on the next tick anyway when I stepped out, so it didn't affect anything here. But do just take the time to make sure that the mobs lure all the way up to you before you start attacking them. Um, sadly, I do not have a clip when the Manticore spawns on tile A, despite uh, several attempts to try and get one. Um, but the principle is very much the same, so I showed you already the tiles, um, I've showed you the timing. Um, there's this very helpful tool which lets you sort of place the Colosseum mobs in this arena and then step through tick by tick, which is how I've come up with this method. Note that it has the sort of original start tile here, but we're using this one instead. So as usual, here the Manticore is spawned on tile B and we've got a major on tile A. So because of that, we'll run to tile B and when we get here is when mobs can start attacking and that's when we're also out of their line of sight so they'll start pathing so then if we step through tick by tick we can see that the major will see us first and the manticore will see us after that and start attacking now this tool isn't perfect um, in reality the manticore will not start attacking straight away it will charge up for 10 ticks so this is when it will first attack which means that you just pray mage for a, quite a long time, deal with the Fremenic around here, and then, as with the previous clip, you just flick the Manticore when you have to, and pray mage the rest of the time. And you can see, as time goes on, you know they're never attacking on the same ticks. So it's always just pray the Manticore, and then pray against the other mob when you need to. And as I said, it doesn't matter what the other mob is, even though the Manticore is range first, then Mage, it doesn't matter what this mob is because they're never attacking at the same time. So even if this was a Ranger, it would be absolutely fine to just keep flicking as you are. So hopefully that's been a useful uh, description of how this works and it's helped sort of simplify all the wave starts basically. Um, as I said, as long as you leave this tile on the right tick, you'll only ever have these two mobs on you. And because the Colosseum's only 12 waves, it's very possible you can reach the boss just by timing that right and getting lucky on spawns over here. Um, but this video is intended for people who probably know a bit about how it works and just want to guarantee the off ticking of these two mobs. Um, so I hope you enjoyed and do let me know if you have any questions below.